we've been looking at the subject, both Paula and I, for a long time, talking with authors and researchers and people and looking through the, the files <clears throat> on a particular subject that I think is uh, not only interesting, but if there is something to it, which I think there is, then it's really very important right now, and that is the presence of something that we call today um, reptilian presence on the earth. Uh, we are obviously all hearing a lot about the reptile aliens, <clears throat> and uh, uh, David uh, David Ike uh, talks about the reptilian presence around the world. I happen to believe that that is true, <clears throat> or I should say that there is something to this idea that there are extraterrestrial life forms here and that some of them may be uh, extraterrestrial uh, reptilians. <clears throat> uh, I've, I've got many ideas about that because I've heard so many stories from so many professional researchers and government and military and, and talk with us, uh, talk about this subject with, with um, different people, especially astronauts and, and scientists. So, I'm pretty cons I'm pretty uh, convinced uh, that there is something to this idea that there are reptile aliens on the earth. I've just heard way too many stories from way too many people who are very legitimate and de jour and real uh, professional people <clears throat> who have who have told me about their one on one experiences uh, with reptile aliens. Happily, I've never come across one. But that doesn't mean they don't exist. Uh, I don't. I don't throw babies out with the bathwater, uh, like our so-called uh, nonsensical but so-called science community <clears throat> that decides that they haven't found something that's important. If they haven't found it, then it's not important. Uh, only until they find something is it important. Well, the same thing is true in archaeology and paleontology. And the sciences, uh, generally speaking, uh, all of these supposedly disciplines of, of knowledge, uh, we always we always come up with the same problem. Unless some uh, scientist who is working for a particular university and uh, and is towing the party line and uh, know he you know, he's worked his way up to the top top scientist at some big university. Why? Because he has learned uh, over the years what to kiss and when and who. And so uh, this way he gets his paycheck. And uh, and so science has become a religion, not, not, a, not scientific at all. It's a religion. And scientists have got their uh, holy books and their holy prophets and their uh, the great prophetic uh, pronouncements. Uh, which, you know, we all see all the time, uh, scientists making big proclamations, uh, pontificating like the Pope. They're the ultimate, ultimate authority on the earth for everything. And then we find out three years later that what they said three years ago is now bullshit and it doesn't apply to anything. But at the time, they were the absolute ultimate authority. And then what they're saying today, in another three or four years, we'll find out that that was bullshit. And so the bottom line is, scientists are nothing more than a religion. It's a it's a fraternal order. It's like the police protect each other, you know, judges protect each other, uh, firemen protect each other, well, scientists protect each other. And uh, they don't know what they're talking about. They haven't got the famous idea, and they're not about to look at any real legitimate facts. And unless they find something themselves that their university can claim and that they can claim uh, that they found it, if you found it and you're not in a university, then it's not important. And the bottom line is, well, that's not exactly the, the case. Uh, it's actually the case is that if you find something on the earth that the scientists didn't know about, First of all, they can't explain it. They have no way of uh, of explaining the phenomena, whatever it is you found, or whatever it is you've discovered. If the scientists cannot explain it away, 
they will ex ex they'll make up something to explain it away. You know, if you talk about UFOs, the flying saucers, uh, you know, the scientists will tell you, well, no, it's just a flock of geese or it's just swamp gas, and that's all there is to it. And then they will all chuckle and laugh and think that's funny, and then they go and move on. And the bottom line is they're being paid a salary. The government's watching them. Their universities are watching them. Uh, and if they see something out of out of place and and begin to look seriously at some of the things which are right in front of your eyes, uh, they're going to lose their job. They're going to lose their paycheck, and uh, and then they're going to have to go out and go to work like everybody else. And so the same problem we have in religion, the same identical situation in religion. You know, the preachers and the 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 clergy. Uh, they are already well. No, they are a religion to start with, and they protect each other. They are pushing the same routine that everybody, all the other preachers are. So the bottom line is that, uh, I've said this before, that religion should be, theology and religion should be a science, meaning the, uh, the extraordinary world that we live in with all of the, I would, you know, for lack of a better term, spiritual uh, things which happen in the world, all these strange and wonderful and, and uh, unexplainable phenomena uh, that's part of our world should be some kind of a scientific explanation for God or for the universe or for the spiritual presence on earth. Of phenomena that we can explain. So I'm saying religion should be uh, a science endeavor, while on the other hand, the science world is a religion. And it's not scientific at all. You have no idea in the world to what degree the scientific community, in America especially, you have no idea to what degree science is crawling on its knees uh, to its masters who pay them their, their checks so that they can be very important people and eat their steak dinners and drive fancy cars and speak at big events and make lots of money speaking and, and promoting themselves when actually it's really a dirty situation. It's really, really very embarrassing uh, that science is, is giving it, it's like a pro prostitute. Science has sold itself as a prostitute to its masters within government. Uh, they, they do whatever they are told by the government, by the universities. Universities are financed by the international elites. Uh, our country is in trouble. Our whole world is in trouble <clears throat> because we are not intellectually honest. We are not very well read. Uh, thank God for the for the uh, web and for other the handful. There's just, there is a select handful of people in America who are referred to as scientists or, or astronomers, etc. But there's just a small, tiny handful that are really, uh, are actually, in point of fact, scientists. They look at the facts and deal with the facts. <clears throat> and so, um, you know, I, I've heard some, uh, I've been reading some articles and hearing some scientists talking about that uh, Stephen Hawkins from uh, England, when he is on stage or on, on uh, camera, and we're sitting there watching him on, on YouTube or whatever, and and he's sitting and he's sitting in the wheelchair and he's using some sort of a mechanical device computer computerized device to speak and, and through <clears throat> and he always has a couple of scientists next to him helping him and uh, you know as uh, to to help him do what he's doing and then he will speak and then it comes through the computer and you will hear the computer voice. Well, I have heard some and been reading some scientists who are saying that what he is saying into the computer when Stephen Hawkins is talking is not what is coming out of the computer, that it's already been programmed 
to, uh, to say what the masters who own this planet want him to say, not what he actually said. You can't hear what he actually says. He speaks into some kind of a computer, and the computer, uh, you know, translates the words, and then you can hear it. The computer is talking uh, and supposedly saying what he's saying. But uh, some of the scientists around him are saying, no, what he is saying is one thing, but what the computer has been programmed to put out is something totally different. And so when you hear these important scientists and physicists and all these other highly paid, uh, uh, highly paid uh, lackeys of the world system that we live under, uh, just understand that virtually nothing that you have been told, nothing you have been shown, nothing that has come out of government, religion, science, nothing that's come out of banking, commerce, uh, educational institution, none of that is based on fact. There's an entire world system of lies, deception, and manipulation, and implications of are, are absolutely astounding. This is why today it's finally, finally beginning to appear to the human race that's been asleep for all these years that big government with all of their big and important uh, buildings and all of their statues and all of the accoutrements of uh, uh, power in Washington, D.C., in the state houses in the states, all of this Roman, gaudy Roman display of political power and money is now falling apart at the seams. And the entire superstructure of Western civilization, both religion, government, commerce, science, all of the institutions man-made which have combined to call, we call Western civilization, is totally, totally corrupt. Lies, deception, money-grubbing, sex, drugs, and rock and roll. And therefore, government is, in point of fact, now beginning to show itself for the first time as being what it has always been, organized crime. Criminal syndicates, we call them Democrat, Republican, no, they're just criminal syndicates. And they are operating in the open and people have no idea in the world what all of this is, where it's taking us and where we're going. But it's now beginning to look like the entire Western civilization is crumbling because it's overwhelming now in the face of everyone who's awake that there is nothing but lies, deception, manipulation, exploitation. <clears throat> so the world that we live in is falling apart because it should. It, it has to because you know, there are universal laws that state if you are building on sand, don't, don't bellyache when the hurricane comes and washes it all away. Well, that's what's happening in America and in Europe and now ultimately around the world. The entire superstructure of the world of mankind is now in its last and final days of lying and deception and so-called BS, which is religion and, and science and commerce and and churches and synagogues and mosques. I mean, all of this is absolutely, absolutely criminality, stupidity. But now America is beginning to see the whole system from day one was corrupt, and now there's all kinds of bloodshed, violence, murder, drug addiction, alcoholism, uh, human slavery, it's a, it's a very, very, very corrupt and bad scene that the human race has finally come to. But it's only expected by people who are in the know, people who know what's going on and have always known. I've always, I've been looking at this world situation for some 65 years and I was talking about, uh, the, the things which are coming on the earth. Some 55 years ago, I was speaking at conferences and doing lectures back in 1960 on the corruption in government, 
the secret societies and, and banking and religion and who runs the churches and where are they where are they getting their money and the entire superstructure, as I said, of the entire Western civilization is crumbling. And it's it's well that it should. It's about time. And so with that, I would then say, when you come across a subject like reptilian aliens here on the earth, you better go back and do your homework, because if it sounds crazy, as probably true. If it sounds too good to be true, it probably is too good to be true. So I am totally convinced that the world that we live in is being run by uh, entities which are not human. That's my personal belief. I don't think that the uh, the people who are in power. I'm not talking about the the. I'm not talking about the uh, the Bushes and the Obamas and all the other uh, goofballs. I'm talking about the real powers behind the world scene. I'm talking about the uh, what was called the one one uh, institution for sure is what has been referred to as the Nazi International. The, the conglomerate of international elite bankers uh, meeting in secret in Argentina, in Europe, in, uh, in Austria, in the mountains. Once you begin to see how this earth really operates and what's actually going on and who's been doing it and who's been at the helm of this for thousands of years, even before America was founded, it's just a very frightening picture when you finally wake up to find out that the human race is being led down a dark alley for a long time, and now it's finally getting to the point with our technology that we are collapsing like the Roman Empire. But the problem is we're taking the whole damn world with us, and the people uh, are not able to do anything. The people are powerless. They all know something's wrong, but nobody could do anything about it. I mean, you can cry and, and complain, but you can't do anything with it. And the reason why is because knowledge is power. And I've been saying this for some 50 years. Unless you have knowledge about how a thing actually works, then you're not going to be able to do anything to help it or fix it. And so that's where we are today. We are now, as a human family on the earth, being led by criminals, by mentally disordered, dysfunctional, uh, mentally deranged criminals. We call them, uh, we call that government, we call them uh, clergy, we call them popes and clergymen and priests and, uh, and, and law enforcement and banking. No, it's a criminal empire. And this is why I think that, there are, that the scriptures that we call the Christian scriptures in the Bible uh, have some validity to it. When we read things in the scriptures that say things like uh, the whole world is lying in the power of the wicked one, the implications of the, of the, of the, of the term is that the entire earth is involved in something very dark, and it's evil. Well, my God, you don't have to be an astronaut to figure that out today. Every country in the world is now locked into violence, revolutions, bloodshed, money, corruption. Uh, it's, it's, uh, and, of course, the religions of the world, both Judaism, Christianity, and Islam, have uh, have never had a mind. I would not say they've lost their mind. They never had a mind. Uh, the the whole idea of child sex and child porn and and violence and revolutions and and, and all the dirty, filthy stuff that goes on behind the scenes and the underbelly of criminality in the world. That's today we call that religion, and government, and business. So eventually, people are going to finally wake up and discover that our world that we're living in is fastly now beginning to now literally fall apart. And something very bad is coming on this earth. 
I don't care what you, uh, how you figure it, it's something is coming. And somebody is in charge of this darkness. <clears throat> and uh, somebody's causing these things to happen. And again, I sing, I'm saying this because I am totally convinced that to, after looking at it and talking to all the kind of people I have over the years and examining this subject, I'm totally sure that I'm absolutely right that we humans on the earth are being led by some dark, other world, <clears throat> not supernatural, but preternatural. Preternatural means not of this world. Some other kind of intelligence is already here, most likely has been here for millions of years, uh, right among us, and they manipulate us, they lead us, they give us our religions, they give us our religious beliefs, they give us our political concepts, they have a, they have put together our our economic order in the world. Somebody very evil has running has been running for God knows how long. Been running a very evil, bloodthirsty world. I'm ashamed to even be a part of this mess right now, but I see it better because at 76 years old. I've been around the world many times. I know what I'm talking about. I couldn't care less who I'm not offending. It doesn't matter who I offend. The truth is the human race is in trouble, and it's going to get a hell of a lot worse real soon. You have no idea in the world what's really coming very soon. It's going to be a catastrophe because you've got too many millions and millions of people who collectively have got an IQ of 70 that have no idea in the world what to do or how to do anything. You have to feed them. All they know how to do is reproduce and bring in more babies and more babies, and those babies have babies and more babies until you've got 7.5 billion people collectively, <clears throat> with an IQ of 70, and uh, the entire world is falling apart. Crime, criminal syndicates, organized crime, government syndicates, banking. I think you're finally getting the point. The human race is in trouble. And that brings me back to my original uh, idea that I wanted to talk about, this whole idea that the world is being ruled by an, a preternatural uh, powers on this earth, something which is not human, is guiding us and driving us into uh, insanity. And um, when people like David Icke talk about uh, reptilian aliens, well, there's a hell of a lot of, of documentation uh, in religions and governments and all kinds of institutions that have uh, got a lot of information on that one subject. And there have been some really interesting authors that uh, Paul Tice and I would like to talk about tonight. Uh, yeah, hopefully, hopefully Paul is with us. Are you, are you now with us, Paul? Yeah, I am here, Jordan. Okay, good. So, uh, uh, you know, I, I, I was talking about reptilians many, many years ago. And uh, John Rhodes, a dear friend of mine, John Rhodes, uh, he's the one that kind of got everybody started talking about reptilians even before I was doing it. I think that's probably where I first heard it from, uh, the, heard the ideas expressed was from John Rhodes, who, who was a very dear friend. Uh, but he's very, extremely knowledgeable on this subject and, and other similar subjects. So... Uh, one to talk with Paul Tice tonight. Uh, again, he's the owner of the Book Tree Bookstore, uh, and publisher. He's a publisher, but he also owns a bookstore in San Diego. And perhaps you could tell everyone where to find you, Paul, with your uh, phone numbers and emails and address and everything. Tell us all about your business and where you are first before we talk any further about this subject. Because I want people to know about your bookstore and the work you're doing because I consider it to be absolutely phenomenal what you've been able to accomplish 
and what you're actually dealing with and, and the in, uh, information that you have at the bookstore and what you have been publishing is extraordinary stuff, and I want people to know about it. So tell us all about who you are, the bookstore, and what you're doing. Yeah, well, just briefly, um, you know, we've got our offices here in the, in the bookstore location here at, in San Diego, so if you're local to the area, we've got uh, – a store, and you can come in and hang out, and and uh, basically get a yeah you know, three three one six Adams Avenue is where we're located, and um, so uh, anytime you're in the area, we're we're open here noon to seven Tuesday through Saturday, and um, we are uh, we have a mail order catalog. If you call our one eight hundred number, it's one eight hundred seven hundred tree. We it's our policy to send a free catalog to anybody in the world that asks for it. Because we've got all of your books in there, we've got all of the books of a number of different people that um, that we've been talking about. Some of the most fascinating people in the, that we've ever had the opportunity to meet, and um, it's all collected in one place. You know, all the books that we've put out on, on this kind of subjects, and then we found what the best of other uh, sources that in order to supplement the catalog. So we've got. A lot of stuff like that for people interested, and, and so on. Well, the, and the kind of uh, materials that you've collected over the years is uh, just astonishing. Uh, all these old out-of-print books that both government and the science uh, industry and governmental powers do not want the people having in their hands. The United States government is not interested in people uh, educating themselves and asking too many questions and beginning to find out what the real tune is in this world, where we've actually come from and who's really running this planet and where did the ancient religions come from and all of this stuff. Nobody in this country uh, in, in government wants the American people to wake up and find out what's really going on. And yeah, a lot, of book stores, book yeah. So a lot of bookstores. Yeah, a lot of bookstores and other uh, entities that specialize in this kind of material are no longer around. I mean, we're finding out people people call us from the Midwest and all from all over the country, and they just say, "Hey, there's no place to, that that anywhere near here that uh, we could get this kind of stuff." And and um, a lot of people will call up from different parts of the country saying that you know if I talked about this stuff with any of my neighbors here, they think I'm crazy. And, uh, mm-hmm. and, but, you know, in order to investigate what's really going on, you, ha- you have to look for it. Otherwise, you're stuck with primetime TV and, uh, you know, in a yeah. liquor, st- liquor store on an, every corner almost. And, you know, you, they, they just would rather have you pacified and, you know, be quiet and, and uh, be, would, you know, our, our goal well, that, here that's, is. That's always been the case is that uh, the powers of be in America are not interested at all period, and having anybody uh, thinking outside of what is uh, considered to be uh, the, the, uh, the, the method of operation and the educational system. Uh, they don't care if you're, not, if you're ignorant and ill-informed and being ripped off because of your education. They don't care about that. As long as you are what they call, what the government calls, in compliance. Well, they what want we're you to trying to... In compliance. Yeah, because, you know, we're trying to find out what's really going on, you know, and yep. all of the, the greatest thinkers in the world who ever were before, uh, you know, we came along in the modern day, there's very few people like that alive today. So it's best to go back and find out what all of this stuff really means and where, you know, we want to find out what's going on. Where do we come from? Why are we here? Where are we going? What's, you know, all of the bigger questions and there's fewer and fewer places now where you can investigate that sort of thing, and because basically um, they just want to enter, you know, entertain you rather than educate you. And so, um, but if you really well, look, find- it's very difficult. It's very difficult to control what people do and think and how they live. It's very difficult if you want to be an Al Capone in government. You want to be a big mobster running the country. It's very difficult for you to control. Highly educated people. True. Because they're not, you know, and they find out that you didn't even finish high school and you're going to present yourself to the world as a, as a great dictator. 
uh, in a country with people who have uh, PhDs and, and doctorates, they're not going to listen to you. So the best way to, if you, if you are nothing more than a, just a slimy criminal, uh, and, and got the money, and the people with real money are backing you because you're a criminal like they are, and so they're financing you <clears throat> so that when you get into power, you can pull off stuff for them that they couldn't do themselves. And so they will finance you, and you don't have to have a intelligence. You don't have to have any uh, morality or any scruples. You don't have to have nothing. Just get out there and shine your shoes and smile and wave at the, and wave at the audience, and we'll get you elected. And when you get elected, you just make sure you do what we tell you to do. And so that's the Obamas of the world. That's the George Bushes of the world. All of the people who are serving their masters from behind the scenes. <clears throat> so, like you said, uh, government is not inter religion, government, commerce is not interested in, in an educated people who ask too many questions. Just go to your job, drink your beer, and watch a silly ass ball game and your silly uh, sitcoms on television, and uh, that's all you need to know. And you well, get out of people. line and start thinking too much. Yeah, we get people coming into the store here of all ages, and they say, you know, and, and all of a sudden they're at one at some point in one person's life, all of a sudden it may click where all of a sudden you realize, wait a minute, there's way more going on here. We've got like older people in their 60s and 70s coming in saying, you know, uh, you know, I've got a guy who's calling us like three, three, four times a week ordering books because he's a he's a minister and he had a he had a stroke and he has a whole congregation of people and now he's realized instead of like preaching all this different stuff he's going back and reading the the, the original creation story the Enuma Elish yeah. investigating all of this older stuff of where religion really came from this guy's like 70 years old 72 or so and yeah. he's just hungry for the information but that's just one example i mean all of a sudden Something clicks if you're if you're lucky enough in your life, and all of a sudden this is this is interesting stuff. This is this is fascinating. If you're curious at all, in the least about about what this is all about and who you really are, then yeah. all of a sudden something opens up, and with fewer and fewer places to go for that. I mean, we're filling a good void here, and I'm just glad that you're you know offering giving me the chance to tell people a little bit about us because. Um, people will call us and say, I never, my real education never even started until I found you guys. So. Well, uh, that's the point I'm, I, I've been wanting to make is that there is a ongoing, professionally financed, uh, well-oiled machine on the earth. And that machine is owned by a handful of people. And the bottom line is at the end of the day, to keep the people occupied, keep the people ignorant, ill-informed, make damn sure you have plenty of liquor stores on every corner, make sure that liquor is everywhere, and, uh, and make sure that if they're into drugs, that you can get the drugs right there on your own, the home street. So make sure you've got plenty of drugs and alcohol and sex and television and sitcoms and yeah, now ball there's games. Yeah, Slow process of uh, marijuana legalization throughout the country because all the states are, are broke. They got no place else to really turn to, to get like a fast buck in order to uh, you know get out of the hole that they've dug themselves into. So they figure, well, you know, let's push the, the criminals out of the way and move into this territory. And well, and, of course, of course. And so yeah, they're. The, the, there's all this, you know, uh, arranging so that, you know, if you're, if you're going to be selling it, you've got to pay a pretty large, uh, uh, portion to, to yeah. the government and stuff. But, you know, that's the way it goes. I mean, you want to live in a, in a free country, then you've got to be free to do your drugs and drink your alcohol, right? Well, of course. And not only that, but it's just a business. And, yeah. Uh, you know. you know. <laughs> but, you and, know, if, no. If that's your thing, that's that. That's fine. I'm not really. I'm not really knocking it because. Um, uh, well, I'm not either. I'm just saying it's just a business. The world yeah. is a business, just like the intro to my show every week. Uh, you know, is, is taken from different motion pictures, but the world is a business. It's yeah. just money. And, and it's uh, just that everybody's yeah. got decisions to make, you know, and the, well, we're just trying to give a different uh, 
chance for people to make a different decision and, and find something fascinating and intriguing and, and meaningful rather than some of the other things that are being offered and you can see the direction in which things are going, you know, and, and a lot of times it's a necessity because money has become our God and in order to uh, appease the gods and to basically keep things running on this monetary system, you've got to create more and more things to create the money that to get you out of the hole that you're digging. So, you know, that's, right that's, that's what we're up <clears throat> against right now. So I think if we educate ourselves in certain ways, and especially in spiritual ways, then we get to the core of our being, uh, suddenly it, it may dawn on you that that's engaging in a lot of this kind of stuff might not be the best thing. You know, and yep. and uh, so well. You know. And the other thing, the other thing, Paul, is that uh, you don't have to be a uh, you know an astronaut or a brain surgeon to look around the just in America, supposedly the most uh, progressive or intelligent nation on the earth, and all of that most powerful empire. But look around this country and what it has become. And the idea I'm, 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 I'm working toward is that the, the people of this country today are bored. They are mad and angry at the situations that they're having to live with while the rich get richer, the poor go, get poor. <clears throat> and, uh, and so the young people today, and this is very important, the young people today, uh, have no, nothing to, to aspire to, uh, uh, nothing that excites them except maybe sex and fast cars and drinking. Well, but they're walking. To, yeah, they're walking into a spiritually bankrupt world. You that's know? it. Totally, totally ignorant, ill-informed, unread, bankrupt, ignorant world. Then uh, and it's collapsing. The whole world now is collapsing because they've gone the wrong way. America has lost its way, it's lost its jobs, it's lost its homes, it's lost its, uh, its, its freedoms, it's lost its intellectual capacity, and now the only thing left to lose in America is your mind. So now people are losing their mind and doing all kinds of crazy things and criminality. So what I'm saying is that the human family uh, was is, is actually hardwired and designed to have the ability to have a brain, have a have a spiritual uh, life to the to the uh, to the human life that we live, and to uh, educate ourselves to how we got here, who are we, where do we come from, what is the universe out there? Um, it's just an extraordinary human world that we live in. But people don't know anything about it, and it's just boring. So since people do not understand what's going on, nobody's ever told them how government really works, uh, they can't understand how come nothing seems to work for them, so they turn to alcoholism, they turn to drugs, they turn to entertainment, they turn to uh, violence in the streets, they turn to all kinds of alcoholism and, and drug abuse, and gangs and wars and violence until finally it's a breakdown of human society. We're looking at today, the world of mankind is looking at the 5th century A.D. with the complete and utter collapse of the Roman Empire. But the problem is with our technology, America, when she goes and she's on her way, and when she goes, it's going to suck down the entire world of mankind through banking, education, uh, business. All of it is going to collapse. And when it does, God help the human race because you've got hundreds of millions of people who do not have a clue as to why they're even here. Uh, you know, and thank God, uh, you know, that they have a job to go to and food to eat. But if something happens to that system, where there are no more jobs and there is no more food, my God, what is going to happen to the human family? So that's why I consider that knowledge is power. And when you begin to open your mind, and, and you've heard me say it before, if your mind's like a parachute, don't work if it's not open. Once you open your mind and find out where the religions and the churches that you go to, 
where those religions really came from and what they're actually teaching that you didn't know at all. You just were going along to get along like everybody else, never for a moment ever suspecting where your church teachings have really come from. And if you are, and if you're Jewish, you think that you are God's chosen people, but then you begin to look at the actual history of the human race, and then you begin to see where Judaism, Christianity, Islam, and other religions, all the other little break-off religions where they have all come from. And I will guarantee you, Christianity, Islam, and Judaism are collapsing on all around the world. And in its place is going to be nothing more than barbaric, uh, raping, murder, violence, because the people have not been taught to think in terms of spiritual values. Yeah, and unless we wake up. And in and, and, and some of the books that I've written, I talk about the fact that uh, there's an awakening on the horizon if we choose to embrace it. Yeah, you know? that's true. And right. uh, because, you know, you look at history and we've actually, um, you know, there's certain indicators which show that there is hope for people to have a better understanding of what's going on. I mean, we just... Uh, um, there's in some cases there is a bit more compassion with with certain people and more people are more uh, people with money are more inclined to step in and, and help those who are starving or having some problems somewhere in the world we're, we're developing some more, a little bit more of a compassionate attitude towards others and uh, some of the biggest billionaires in the world have gotten together and professed to give most of their money away because they're concerned and so if um, if the average person even like we don't have that power but the, if the average person can come to an understanding about how compassion works and, and why we're what we're supposed to be learning on this journey, because if yep. we can awaken ourselves or, or wake up, um, then the whole world will, you know, uh, the whole world can change. And it's either yeah, going to well, go in, in one direction or the other. Well, this is why I'm saying that the work you've done uh, – uh, by putting together not only your publishing uh, operation, which you are massively now publishing around the world, but uh, but not only your publishing, but the bookstore itself. And what you have done with your life and your work is phenomenal, and I understand that, and that's why I want other people to know about it, because I know people are not only ignorant, uh, ill-informed and unread, but they're also angry and frustrated uh, because they they know something's wrong, but they don't know what it is. So I'm saying that to the world that's that's listening today, you need to see the kind of intelligent wisdom, knowledge, research, all of the strangest wonders of the world that has been hidden from you by your government, by your churches, by your religions. And you need to wake up and discover what humanity really is. And yeah, there that are. kind of information is in, yeah. is in books and, and, and lectures and, and uh, audio, video, books, lectures. And that's what uh, Paul Tice has collected, just masses amount of ancient history, ancient religions, the occult world of knowledge, where things have come from why we believe what we believe. It's just a phenomenal collection of, of wisdom and knowledge that he's been working on pretty much all of his life. And I know that because I was with him for a long time, and I've been trying to do the same thing, wake people up to where the knowledge is. And I would suggest that the, one of the first places I would point people to, if you're looking for really interesting stuff you've never heard before about your religions, about your government, about your your whole world around you. Uh, it would be uh, the, the Book Tree bookstore in, in San Diego. It's a huge, it's a big operation where he's, he's now publishing all kinds of out-of-print uh, books from the 1800s, etc., 1900s, books that have been passed over, uh, you know, we find them in, in old libraries and old bookstores and then have them reprinted. 
So you just be amazed at how much you don't know when you look at the uh, <laughs> what what Paul has been publishing, and I just want everybody to know about that. His, there are his, his answers, company. yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yep. The company is uh, the T H E, the Book Tree, and uh, so tell us again about uh, where people can find you and on the on the web and and what you're doing and phone numbers and anything and tell the people because what you're doing is so important. Well, I appreciate that. Yeah, it's uh, it's the booktree.com. A lot of people forget the the at the beginning, but it's the booktree.com. Yeah. And we're actually redoing the entire website now. It's not working all that great, but we've got uh, somebody that's decided to step up and help us out, and we're going to have some, uh, you know, check on it in you know another two three weeks. And you can go on there now and just see mostly all the books that we that we carry. It's the booktree.com. Mm-hmm. And um, our 800 number, 24 hours a day, just call up and uh, we'll send you a catalog free any place in the world. Just give us a call. Uh, I guess the 800 number only works in the U.S., but it's 1-800-700-8733. Good way to remember it is 1-800-700-TREE. If you're outside the country, it's uh, area code 619-280-1263. And... Um, you know, we're, we're just trying to do the best we can. Uh, you know, you and um, the person we talked about last week, Jack Berenger, had been, yeah. had a pro- profound influence on my life. You opened up my mind, and, um, you know, I had been a rare books collector all my life, and I was able to return uh, some of that knowledge that you had originally shared with me. And we've been doing this together for, I don't know, 25, 30 years at least. Yep. Yeah, At actually. least that. And uh, I've always been interested in things which are hidden, uh, treasures, all kinds of strange treasures that somebody stumbles upon by chance and finds out something that is mind-boggling. You know, you'll find some chest with, with gold and silver that no, no one knew existed that's been buried for hundreds of years. And, and, we've and in your backyard... That. You know, and in your backyard, you find out something's been buried 500 years ago, and it just by chance happens to be in your backyard. And we've collected all that kind of stuff here based on, you know, the amazing people that we've been fortunate enough to associate ourselves with over the years. And, yep. you know, we used to hang out in Manly Hall's library. That that was a treasure trove in itself right there. Oh, of course it was. Absolutely. My incredible man, Manly Palmer Hall. Absolutely incredible man. And his work was astounding. But, but uh, you know, I, I started out talking about the reptilians. You have a couple of books. Uh, and some people that you and I know, and but what are some of the books that you would recommend people who are interested in this whole subject that's been known for many, many years by academics at the top of the world, but uh, the people, the generally speaking, the, the people on the street, they're not aware of. But if you want to wake up and find out what the masters who own this planet, what they really know and what they're really doing, uh, who would you, where, what, what, where can the people go for this kind of knowledge when it's dealing with the reptilian presence on the earth? Well, um, we published a book in 1999 and, and called uh, Flying Serpents and Dragons, The Story yes. of Mankind's yes. Reptilian Past. And Say it again. Uh, Flying Serpents and Dragons, The Story of Mankind's Reptilian Past. And in fact, wow. it's uh, been recommended by, by actually David Ike's recommended it to everybody for years. And from the day that we published it, almost 20 years ago, sales have never dropped on this book. It's all word of mouth that people just say, "Yeah, you got to read this book. It's amazing." That's right. The author mm-hmm. was a cryptologist in World War II, where he decrypted enemy signals, and the guy was 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 brilliant. And he decided to go back in history and decrypt all of the old ancient documents to find out, you know, what really happened back then. And yep. so he came up with the fact that, you know, we had had an outside influence from, you know, reptilian type influences. You know, you, you've got the serpent in the Garden of Eden. And of course. When you look it throughout all of the cultures in the world, the the one motif or the one uh, 
symbol is a, a serpent which is revered in all of the different cultures worldwide. In fact, in the, in the Western world, the serpent is seen as a negative influence, whereby in most virtually every other country it's positive. But at the That's same right. time, um, um, Even we don't the know. the Pharaoh's headdress in, in ancient Egypt was, a, was the head of a serpent, uh, now, the head of the snake. Yeah, and, you know, people might say, oh, well, you know, um, the serpents were, were everywhere in the ancient world, all over the world, so the people would revere it and worship it throughout all countries. But, I mean, you've got birds that were all over the world. You've got fish that are all over the world. Why is it the serpent? Why? Why is that? And yep, so right. there, there are a number of really good references that will tell you that that there was something going on back then on a really... Well, and not only that, but like you said, there's a number of good reference works, not just uh, not just some novels by some people who are mildly interested. No, people back in the 1700s and 1800s were breaking uh, new ground, looking at the, uh, you know, at the scientific and hidden scientific uh, implications of uh, reptile aliens and who and what was going on and it shows you from the ancient uh, writings of the ancient world from India from Africa from Asia all over the world they, the, the 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 great writers and researchers back in you know three four five hundred years ago were researching this subject and today uh, today all we know is football and basketball and drinking your beer and watch TV 